Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be listening to interview experience for Micron's NVMQRA engineer position. We have Sudarshan with us who is pursuing his masters in embedded systems from Bits Pilani. So let's hear it from him. Hello all. My name is Sudarshan and uh, I have since uh, being interviewed in Micron and getting the offer in Micron, I want to share this uh, the process which is involved in Micron for the benefit of everyone. Uh, the Micron, uh, Micron is actually, uh, let me start with the company's overview. Micron is a memory based company which produces NAND flash, NOR flash or memory chips for computer hardware and store, portable storage devices. Uh, so coming to the interview perspective, Micron had three rounds. The first round was a resume shortlisting, which was based on CG. Uh, to be precise, in my college, the CG, those who were having CG above seven were called for the, the written test. Uh, so after written test, uh, there was uh, there was the te technical interview round, which is profile specific. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in in my college, the Micron had come, Micron had come for four profiles. One was scribe design, which is nothing but the physical design or the front end design for VLSI. Second was the NVM QRA, uh, or if I may put supposed to say the uh, the memory controller design for memories that is PCI or SATA, uh, like the in those lines. And the third was data scientist for uh, computer science oriented branches. So e each of these profiles had varied interviews. It was not a common interview for all the three profiles. To be and uh, to be more precise, the interview was a sp uh, profile specific interview. So uh, so so if if you are trying to aim for a particular profile, it's better that you be prepared in that domain rather than being more generic, because the interview might go deeper into that and you will be able to answer in a better way. So to sum it up, in, uh, we uh, there were three to four rounds in Micron for the interview interview process. Uh, having told about the interview process in the previous section, I would want to elaborate on the basic step after resume shortlisting, that is the return test. So the return test in Micron was a bit different compared to other companies. Here, uh, depending on the profile, we we had a choice to opt for. Uh, the different sections in the written test. So the written test had five different sections. General, that is their basic aptitude. C, C++, uh, or coding. Coding, it was not a coding where you had to type and submit. It was a MCQ based coding. So a third was Verilog. And uh, 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 fourth was Python. If I'm not wrong, we had a choice between Python and Verilog, depending on the profile you have to choose. So again, it's up to the candidate uh, uh, to which he wants to appear for and the last was digital which is compulsory for all so these were the five basic to, uh, domains i would like to say for this interview uh, or the written test so coming to the apt aptitude test we had uh, topics ranging from time speed distance uh, work work done uh, and uh, a few assertion reason type questions and numerical or logical based questions. So basic aptitude practice from uh, any of the books would suffice for this round. And uh, in digital, uh, being a electronics graduate, you, you, people won't find this round very hard. Uh, to, uh, this round, it was more has in uh, it was more as in hit rate. The, the amount of questions which, which you do right. So this these tests didn't have any negative markings. The one which I when I'm mentioning, so it was purely hit and try. Uh, so do not be afraid to leave out questions of, uh, thinking that it might reduce your overall marks. Uh, so we can attempt uh, all the questions. In digital, we had questions from Mux, uh, Mux, FSM's synchronous logic, asynchronous logic, Karnau maps, and all those. Basic gate syllabus would be uh, sufficient for this. And in C, C++, we had questions from uh, basic int data types. Then we had few questions from data structures or uh, uh, arrays. So those basic stuff, if you if you are if you are good, it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, in Python, again, uh, very basic questions were asked. Python was mainly for people who wanted to appear for data scientist profiles. So those who are uh, having NVM QRA or Scribe didn't were not required to take up Python. And uh, yeah, very log. So people who are appearing for Scribe design had to take up very log because it is being one of their core. Uh, coding backgrounds. So very low again, basic Samit Palnitkar or any other book or any other net material, internet material would be sufficient for this process. So one thing I would like to say is that th this written test didn't have any negative marking. So be sure of that. And 
uh, try to get as much marks as possible to make through this round. Uh, so having told about the written test in the previous section and having made it through to the written test, now it was a time for an interview round. Uh, as I told you, I had applied for NVMQRA and my interview was profile specific to NVMQRA. So my uh, interviewer had a good background towards this uh, computer architecture as in cache systems or uh, device drivers, to be frank. Uh, and uh, since I was being from embedded, he looked into my resume and the first question he asked was my research practice, which, ha which I had done in my second semester. So he was, uh, I would not like to touch up my entire research practice here, but I would want to tell the important aspect what he wanted me to answer. So in my RP or my research work, he was more keen on my process as in how did I go about the entire process of the problem statement? So what was the main motto? And how did I go about this? How did I, how did I divide my topic among my team members? So he was more interested in this than the entire research. So, uh, so, so, so it is very important for people who, who put things in resume to be sure on what they put. And because questions fall up from, fall up from whatever you tell uh, on whatever is being probed. And after my RP, he, uh, the, uh, the next question he asked was my device drivers project. My device drivers project was based on a character, uh, sorry, a block driver implementation on a, using a USB, a virtual USB. So again, uh, he was more keen on the process. So what was the process here? What was the, why was this project needed? And uh, what is the main name? And how did you achieve the result? And uh, since this project couldn't get the appropriate result for us, he asked, why did you do the project if you're not able to get the result? So people here, you should have the convincing skill to say that, okay, we wanted to try this out. We wanted to make sure that this thing works. So these type of answers are very important to convince him. Uh, without convincing him, he won't be able to take up your next question. So the next question was based on my, uh, um, uh, what I can say, art or scheduling. So, so uh, I would want to give a clear statement that my interview was totally embedded specific. So all these questions were very are very important or people who wish to attend these profiles are, are required to know these topics before sitting in the interview. So in embedded, he asked me about inter-process communication, that is auto scheduling, how the process communicates between two tasks. So what happens? So how, how does the task switching happens from one task to the other task? And uh, so, and one more thing is in many of the, uh, in, 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 in these topics, we can, we have a good knowledge in the hardware as aspect, but we would want the software aspect to also be known in this because without both, without software, you can't sync with the hardware and get the process moving. So th th that is very important. And one more thing he asked me was on my library's project for embedded systems. So he asked me what is atomic process and uh, spin lock, semaphore, how are they useful? How are they useful in your project and how can you implement them? So having answered all these basic questions and convincing him to, to, to a basic level, he now was, he was going deep into the computer organization part that is memory barrier. So people who don't know memory barrier, memory barrier is a, is a level above cache as in, uh, uh, I mean, if you have cache and memory barrier is your access to the main memory. So you can say cache and the main memory is separate mem memory barrier. And to access that, how do you access that using hardware software? So, so one basic answer for this could be take a semaphore or a spin lock and uh, go for a concurrent access. So people in order to access these uh, type of answer, these type of questions, you need to know the subject properly. And, uh, it is very important to know these topics to a good extent to us to convince the interviewer. After this, he was asking me more on my previous work experience. And I would like to touch upon the fact that I had a work experience for one year in Honeywell in Bangalore. So he was, uh, he was keen on, uh, uh, knowing what, what domain of work was I doing there? It was in hardware software or how did, how did I go about my work? How was my experience there? And why did I quit the job to take up my uh, master's? Uh, so these basic questions you can expect from the interviewer and, uh, towards the end, he was asking more of, uh, general questions, which any HR would ask. So what do you think about the profile? Do you have any interest in this profile? Uh, or, uh, what is your main interest? So these type of questions can be expected towards the end if you perform well. Uh, and in the, uh, so yeah, to be, to be uh, in an abstract level, these were the main questions asked to me. So it can vary from 
interviews to interview as a candidate. So it's very important to know what you have put in your resume. Friends, uh, having said it in an abstract manner, I would like to say on the return test and interview process. One, uh, uh, most of you would like to know, like, how did I go about this process to crack it? So coming from the starting part, that is the return test. Return test, I had mentioned that we had uh, four to five sections and one section was optional. So for these sections, it's critical that you do the questions faster. Do not worry about it's right or wrong because it's, I mean, there is no negative marking in this aspect. And in aptitude, uh, uh, and one more thing I would like, I forgot to mention in my written test part was the aptitude traction had two attempts. So you could attempt to twice and based on the two attempts would be taken for your final grading. And in, uh, but that was not the case for other rounds. So. Uh, do not expect the other rounds to have two attempts as aptitude round. And this format can change every year, uh, depending on the requirement of the organization or the platform of the edit and test. So it is not that whatever I told will come next time, this uh, will come the same way next time. So be prepared for that. Coming to the preparation part uh, for the aptitude, um, we can refer indiabix.com, as many of you would know, or uh, hit bull, CPT hit, hit bullseye. Or you can refer Arun Sharma books for uh, Arun Sharma CAD books for basic aptitude problems like time, speed, distance, percentage, ratio, proportion, then uh, few logical reasoning questions as well. And coming to digital uh, gate materials is sufficient. But having said that, do not expect the same questions as being uh, asked in gate. Questions might be innovative, but it generally is easy. So uh, you need to know how to adapt to these questions. Uh, and the time frame for each section was 20 minutes. So you have to be fast. I'm emphasizing that again that you must be fast because there's no negative marking and it will be a good amount of competition since there's no negative marking. And after this, we had Python. So Python again, if you have worked on any Python, uh, uh, Python project, so that, that knowledge will be sufficient to take up the test. No special preparation is required. And same applies to uh, very long. So, People who have uh, uh, the triple graduates who have uh, studied computer uh, computer architecture RC would have a good hold in very long. So again, have brush up these subjects before going to the test, and uh, because they're very easy to ask. So yeah, uh, it, the written test was a short for short duration, but the aim was to get the maximum score. So keep that in the mind and go for the test. So now comes the preparation for interview. Uh, as I have, as I I had mentioned that my interview was embedded specific, so questions relating uh, to what I can say IPC that is inter process communication, auto scheduling, uh, different type of scheduling. So preparation for these books, in, uh, preparation for this was from my class notes uh, from my art house class and ESD class, whatever, whatever I attended, and um, uh, I think those were sufficient. And if you have implemented any project for this. Uh, that will give you an edge over the, in, that will give you an edge in the interview compared to others. Second is device drivers. In device drivers, I had mentioned, uh, had referred uh, many online articles from O'Reilly or um, any YouTube content will be fine, which covers basic uh, block, different types of device drivers like character block and network drivers. Look, these subjects are not like what is being asked in textbook. It's more of an application oriented. So the more you look into it, the more familiar you get into and more confident will be able to answer. So it is, it is very important to learn from the application perspective than to read a textbook and to say I've completed. So keep that in mind while preparing this and uh, in device drivers, uh, if you have implemented any project for this, it will be of immense help because that shows that how well you've understood the subject and that will help you in the interview process. So that you can expect. And apart from that, uh, uh, basic coding questions in C, C++, like uh, volatile int, pragma pack, or any compiler directives, which you have not heard before, because uh, these are things that are commonly used in the industry. So a basic knowledge of these, not all, a basic, where you can answer three or four out of six will be enough. So those things are very, those, those things you have to pay attention to. And uh, uh, so the interview, uh, the interviewer may also ask you about communication protocols. If you're from embedded, embedded domain, like uh, SPI or I2C or CAN or UART. So the differences between each protocol must be very clear and specific. 
and their application, their operating domains and specifications. So these are things that the interviewer interested. Do not go about saying that I implemented this for this process. But he clearly wants why did you why did you choose this over others? What was the reason? So you must be able to convince him in that aspect. So uh, do your project in such a way that you can convince others on how you why have you done that in this way or why have you chosen this topic? So it is very important. And uh, coming to my preparation for this interview, I had prepared from Udemy. And having worked on R architecture for the past two years, I was familiar with the art of scheduling from the Keel Microvision software. So that helped me to answer the questions. Uh, then in Udemy, you can have a lot of practice, hands-on practice from the course. So if you have time into time to look up into those questions, uh, to those topics, please do look up. But the basics are these, which I covered before. It's very important to have a good grip in these subjects.